y'all. How are y'all doing today? Thank you for watching. Hope you're going to enjoy today's episode. Today I'm making chocolate chip banana bread. I have some bananas that are really overripe and still in this quarantine. The governor lifted the mandatory stay at home, stay at work, but it is recommended that you still um, follow uh, staying home and, and not going into work, but it's just not mandatory. As far as my job goes, I haven't heard anything yet of when we're returning. I assume I'll hear something in the next um, few days. As you see, these bananas have had it, so it's time to make some banana bread. I try to tweak my recipes to at least be a little on the healthier side. So first we're going to use three bananas. I am going to do it's a total of one and a half cups flour. I'm doing uh, three quarters cup of whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour. You don't want it all whole wheat because then it'll be very very dense so you do have to mix the two. Teaspoon of baking soda, about a half a teaspoon but I usually just do a pinch of salt. I don't usually measure my salt I just know it's about a pinch. Um, a teaspoon of vanilla, two eggs, a cup of chocolate chips. Most recipes call for one cup of sugar. I do a half a cup of sugar. I use dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is better for you. This is another tweak that I've done instead of the you know semi-sweet or the milk chocolate. I try to add some good chocolate in there. Uh, and a half a cup of unsalted butter softened. You want to preheat your oven to 350. First thing I'm going to do is add a teaspoon of the baking soda to the flour, which is all-purpose and whole wheat together. And then give that a quick whisk to combine. I'm going to add a half a stick of unsalted butter and get that going, get it creaming. I'm going to add a half a cup of sugar and you want that to cream until it becomes light and fluffy and you're just incorporating the sugar into the butter. Alright, this is nice and creamy. So I'm going to add the bananas and you want to, um, you know, they're, they're already mushy but you just want them to get mixed in. All right, then we're going to blend this until it's mixed. And then I'm going to, I forgot to add a pinch of salt. So just about that's good. Again, mix this in. Next, I'm going to add my eggs. And I will just add these one at a time. Okay, now, now I want to add in the flour and you want to do this on low. And I just like to do a little at a time. And here I go again, making a mess. I always make a mess. So on low, because you don't want it spraying all up. You want to be dusted in, in flour. Normally I don't measure, but for the sake of this, I'm measuring. All right, that looks nice and incorporated. I'm going to scrape down the sides so everything is nice and mixed. And then I'm going to mix it one last time before adding the chocolate chips. Just a quick mix because you don't want it tough. All right, that's good. 
Then I'm going to fold in. I say fold in. I'm just going to put them low. And let this mix in the chocolate chips. And that's, again, one cup of dark chocolate chips. And that looks good. Mmm. Smells so good. Okay, I'm going to get this all off the beater. You want everything. I think this is going to be good treat for me for Mother's Day. My daughter is coming over Saturday night to spend the night and she's going to cook dinner. I'm assuming my son's going to help her. And um, anyway, she's going to spend the night. We're going to have, you know, drinks and whatever surprise she's making me for dinner. And I figured I could have this ready for for um, us to snack on as a little bit of a dessert that's not too awful a little bit it's a little bit healthy for you it's got bananas and it's got the dark chocolate in it and it's got some whole wheat in it so all right and then you want to make sure everything is mixed in pull it off the bottom and that should be good you want to put it in a greased loaf pan. I have this nifty little spray olive oil bottle, or is, you can put any oil in there, but I, I use olive oil because olive oil is healthier for you. And I just picked this up at Aldi's and I got a, this and a vinegar dispenser, I think for five bucks, both yeah, together. So it was a really good deal. So I'm just gonna spray this down. With some good healthy olive oil. And you want to spread this evenly. We're going to put this in a 350 oven for about 55 minutes. You're going to stick a toothpick in and when it comes out clean you know it's done. Set my timer. Set my timer. I always like to do it a little bit before, so I'll do it about 40 minutes. No, I'm going to do it, I'll do it 45 minutes. That's about 10 minutes before, and you can check it because I hate an overcooked and dry um, cake or bread, anything like that. So we'll be back in about 45 minutes. I'm going to stick a toothpick in it, and if it comes out clean, and it does, then we know that it is done. This only took me 45 minutes instead of the 55 minutes. That's why I always set a timer and do mine 10 minutes early before I actually need to pull it out. Because you never know, um, your Pyrex is a little different than a regular um, nonstick pan. I think Pyrex will cook a little bit faster. Also, ovens cook differently. I'm going to move this to a wire rack to cool for about 10 minutes before I turn it out onto a platter. You should smell the house. The house smells absolutely heavenly. All right, now it's time to turn out the bread. I'm going to take and run a knife around the edges just so I can... It'll unstick a little better and then hope it comes out without ripping the bread. It's always a hit or a miss. Uh-oh. We might be in trouble. Let's try this again. <gasps> Yay! It came out just fine. A little bit of coaxing. Oh, doesn't that look beautiful? Looks wonderful. I can't wait to slice into it. It's going to cool a bit. You could. Me, personally, I love things fresh out the oven. I will cut a slice and eat it while it's warm. But I'm going to let this cool. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to try it tonight. I might just wrap it up, put it in the freezer, and save it for this weekend for Mother's Day. I did freeze the banana bread. I'm going to take it out the freezer so that we can have it for Mother's Day, and it's about two days before it's Friday, and 
I'm going to show you how I wrapped it. So obviously there's tin foil. And then there are two layers of cling wrap. And it will freeze very well in the freezer like this. So all I got to do is let this defrost and it'll be delicious. You could even heat it back up in the microwave maybe for 10 seconds once it defrosts. Because I like mine warm. But it don't have to be warm. You can just eat it once it defrosts. You can just eat it as is. Some people like to smear a little butter on it too. And you can do that. Any your heart's desire. Nutella would be good. But it does already have chocolate chips in it. Um, peanut butter would be good on it as well. Be back to show you what it looks like on the inside. Mm -hmm. 